Hey friend, Roger Christofferson here, again with another first listen review. Uh, today, just got done listening to it actually, uh, King's X, Three Sides of One. actually got this a couple days ago, but I've been listening to so much other stuff that I got that uh, I didn't have time to really get to this one until just now, but listened to it a couple times through actually, so <clears throat> um, it's fresh on the brain. Um, it's been quite a few years since their last one, I would have to 12, 14 years, I can't remember now. Since their last album, they've been extremely busy amongst themselves with uh, all kinds of side projects and stuff going on. Um, but finally got back around to uh, an album that's highly anticipated. So I guess the big question is, did it live up to the expectations? Well, yes and no. Um, I guess we'll just run through it. Uh, starts out with Let It Rain, which uh, was the first single off the uh, album they released that back in June. Um, so I'm sure everybody that's uh, King's X fans had a chance to listen to that one. Good song. It's kind of a mid tempo y, very catchy though, kind of song. <clears throat> uh, second song on it's called Flood Part 1. So I'm assuming there's a Flood Part 2 somewhere coming because there is no Part 2 on this CD. So I guess that's a uh, good indication that they're going to be recording some more stuff, I hope. Uh, decent song, a little more upbeat. Um, Nothing super catchy about it, but you know, they got the classic uh, harmonies and you know, got uh, Doug sounds great on this album, singing and bass playing, ties, guitars, he's just got that certain style about him. One thing I did notice about it, there's not a whole lot of soloing going on. I mean, there are some solos, but not like uh, not like I was hoping for anyway, but you know, there's, there's a few here and there scattered around. There's one at the very end of She Called Me Home, which is probably the best one on the whole deal, and that's second to last song, but there's a couple more scattered about in there, but overall not a whole lot. And of course, Jerry it sounds great, drums, so they're, all their harmonies are always super tight. I know they always get compared to the Beatles because of their harmonies. I The only thing I hear Beatles-ish about King's X ever has been their style of harmonies and the, the, the notes they pick for the harmonies, not the music so much. Um, going even way back to their, their first album even. Um, then I guess we go on to Nothing But The Truth. It's a, that's the longest song at all. Most of these are right around the three, four minute mark. A couple even shorter ones. Uh, this one's up there, six minutes. It was okay. Nothing special. Kind of another mid-tempo one. And then we uh, get to Give It Up, which was the second single released back there in July. Um, this one's kind of cool. I like the uh, groove the song has. It's uh, more upbeat. Uh, actually, the funny part is the thing I like the least about it is the chorus. Just kind of a shout it out. Give it up. Give it up. Doesn't really do much for me. <laughs> but honestly, it's kind of weird that that's what they use as the, uh, the catch in this one. I thought it could use a little bit better chorus, but you know, I guess it's still decent. And then track number five is the... Uh, third single they just released here, actually about a week or so ago. All God's Children, another slower one, but it's still got that good melody, catchy melody to it. Um, one thing I've noticed about these guys, they started out, my, my favorite King's X album is still the very first one, the, the debut. Um, you know, Gresham Goes to Nebraska was pretty decent, but my favorite one's the first one. It's, they just had the style of heaviness and pop and melody and musicianship that really I thought combined really well. I don't think they've ever captured that again on any of their albums. I, they did, came close on the next few, but somewhere around Ear Candy, and Mr. Bulbous, that era, they just kind of started writing these longer, slower, dirgier type sounding albums. Just a lot of songs that just never got up and went anywhere, at least for me, and I just kind of started losing a little interest in their albums, and the last few have really just been the same, not doing it for me, and I hate to say that because I love this band, but they really haven't. This one's, overall, doesn't have the uh, anything that's like really slow and dirty like that, so I'm happy about that. Nothing really rocks on it either, but at least the slower songs are still melodic and catchy. All God's Children is one of those songs. Uh, take the time. At least uh, that one's also slow, but it's got acoustic, and it's it shows uh, uh, Ty's like guitar work as far as his you know just his taste or his 
it's a very tasteful one, I should say. And, uh, you know, it, it never really picks up in that song either, but it's a good song. It's catchy. Festival, decent song. It's kind of more of an upbeat one. Yeah, just doesn't really go anywhere. Swipe Up is okay. That one's still kind of a mid tempo upbeat song. It's, it's catchy enough. I, it's probably one of the better ones on the album. Holidays, same thing, right along the same lines, nothing really super special there. Now Watcher, I think is probably the rockin'est song on the album. That one's got a really cool groove to it. Probably my favorite song on the album is actually Watcher. That one's really good. Um, she Called Home is probably the closest thing you're going to get to a slower dirgier type thing, but it really doesn't get that slow, and it's got, like I said, the killer solo, solo uh, guitar solo at the end of it there. And then it ends with Every Everywhere, which is a really short song. Doesn't uh, It's kind of mid tempo y, lots of harmonies. And then that's it. This, this, it uh, nothing on this album really uh, just stands out. It's like, going to be like an all time uh, great, long lasting song, at least not for me, which is pretty much how it's been for the last few albums. Uh, the only thing I could say is like it's a little bit more upbeat than. Some of their stuff, it's not really that heavy. Um, and, I mean, I, I guess it's not what I was hoping for, but it's still a decent album. Um, I would probably rate it a 3 out of 5. If you really want to hear a good album, though, I would grab Ty Tabor's most recent one, Shades, that came out earlier this year. That's a really good album. Um, that sounds like what a King's X album I would like to hear. Um, really good. Uh, I know uh, Doug had one out last year. I don't really care for his solo albums too much. I don't know. His side projects are pretty cool. Uh, I like Doug's side projects, you know, the stuff he's done, which he has a million of, uh, KXM being one of them. I think that was pretty cool, you know, with George Lynch and then the drummer from Korn, which is a name I can't think of. That's good stuff. Um, Jerry Gaskell's had a couple out there that were kind of okay. They weren't bad, but nothing that really stood out for me. But Ty Tabor, this puts out these killer soul albums and he does some side projects like the Jelly Jam. I think they're just amazing. I Ty Tabor just guitar playing, the sense of melody, the singing I, is always spot on. He, he does have that John Lennon-ish type singing style so I guess I do see a little bit there where you know people have that Beatles you know mindset or reference but uh, not on this album, not on this one. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. It's still a good album. I mean, I'm not going to like bash on it. It's uh, better than some of the last few I guess they've had out. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let's you know, keep talking about this stuff. Tell me what other uh, albums you guys like by these guys' side projects, too. I mean, there's like there's a lot. There's probably 25, 30 albums out there, side projects. Like, no, no exaggeration there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Talk to you guys later. See ya.